Hey, this is Mrs. Reichelt, and we are moving into the trunk muscles. Um, so if you're following along with the notes, we're in the first page still, but we're getting closer to the second page. So the first thing that we'd like to I'd like to go through is the pectoralis major. Um, so all of this here is the pectoralis major that you can see, um, and this is in the group of the anterior trunk, and it's also a part of the shoulder girdle. Okay, so the pectoralis major is a fan-shaped muscle, and it forms the, or covers, the upper part of the chest. And the origin is going to be the sternum and the clavicle. The actions is going to be flex and adduct the humerus. Alright, so the next one we actually don't really have a picture of, but the next one is going to be the intercostals. And you do have external and internal ones, and we will color them, um, but they're going to be right in here. Okay, unfortunately your book doesn't actually go through and show them, but you do need to know them. Um, so when you go through and color, then you'll be able to see those, but they are um, right in here. Okay, so these are also anterior trunk muscles. And they are deep muscles. found between the ribs. So the origin are the ribs and the insertion are going to be the tissue surrounding the ribs. And then the major function of these or the action is going to be um, is that it aids in breathing. Okay, so next up, let's go ahead and go through, I guess we're on the second diagram, let's do the rectus abdominis. So the rectus abdominis, again the rectus means that it's straight up and down. Um, the rectus abdominis is a part of the abdominal girdle. And this one is going to be, so the we're going through this one. Um, the most superficial part of the abdomen and it's paired so there's one on each side here and then the origin is the pubis the insertion is the sternum and the fifth through the seventh rib or ribs I guess and then the function or the action is that it's going to flex the vertebral column. Next up, we have the external obliques. And I'm trying to go in the order of the notes. Sometimes they get messed up. But next up, we have the external obliques. So these ones are going to be right over here okay um, so the external oblique is again a part of the abdominal girdle they are also paired just like the rectus abdominis and they're going to make up the lateral walls of the abdomen the origin is the lower eight ribs. The insertion is the iliac crest. And then this is going to flex and rotate the vertebral column. So kind of like the rectus abdominis except for this one also is going to rotate it as well as um, flexing. Um, so let's go ahead and do the 
internal obliques. So the internal obliques is this picture right here. And it's kind of confusing because they're kind of cut out. Um, but this picture is a pretty good diagram of each of those. So the internal obliques, they're going to be positioned the opposite way as the external obliques. These ones are also part of the abdominal girdle. They are, whoa, deep to the external oblique, and you can kind of see that. I guess I'm gonna, I'm gonna erase what I just wrote, so you can see. Whoops, I'm messing up here. Okay, so you can see that they are deep to the external oblique because it looks like we cut a piece of the external oblique out to get to the internal oblique. Um, so let's see, the origin of the internal oblique is going to be the iliac crest. And then the insertion are the ribs. And again, these are going to flex and rotate the vertebral column. Okay, so next up, let's go ahead and do the transversus abdominis. So this one is deep. You can see that it's deep to the internal oblique. And also, this is part of the abdominal girdle. And these ones are the deepest muscles of the abdomen and the origin are the ribs and the iliac crest. The insertion is the pubis and the function or the primary action is that it's going to compress the abdominal contents. So it compresses whatever is inside of your abdomen. Okay, so I think we've covered all the ones from there. I just got to double check. Um, okay, and we're almost done with this section here. Um, so the next one we're going to go through is the trapezius. The trapezius is that part of the posterior trunk. It is a diamond shaped, so if you kind of saw the rest of it, it's a diamond shaped, so that's the, um, the description of it. The origin is the occipital bone, and um, in addition, you have the cervical vertebrae and also the thoracic vertebrae. The insertion is the spac um, scapular spine and also the uh, clavicle. And this is going to help to raise and retract and also rotate the scapula. Next up we have the Let's see, latissimus dorsi, which is right here. Okay, so this is also paired, so it's right in here. Okay, so the latissimus dorsi is also part of the posterior trunk, but it's also a part of the shoulder girdle. Okay, so this is a large and flat muscle. Um, the origin is going to be the lower spine and the iliac crest. The insertion is the humerus. I'm just going to write proximal humerus, but you just got to know the humerus. And then the action is it will extend and adduct the humerus. 
Okay, so next up here, we have the erector spinae, or you're going to want to say spinae. Okay, so the erector um, spinae, or spinae, um, made up of three muscles. You only have to know the collective three, but when you go through and color them, make sure you color each of them. Um, you can color the same. You can color all three of them the same, though. Um, so these ones make up the posterior trunk. They, The major description is back extension. And they're common in lower back pain. The origin is the iliac crest in addition to the third through the twelfth ribs and also the vertebrae. So they have a bunch of different origins. And then the insertion are going to be the ribs, thoracic, and cervical vertebrae. And then these are going to your action here. It'll extend laterally and it'll help to extend the spine as well. So it helps you extend laterally and extends the spine. Um, let's see, a couple more, the quadratus lumborum is next and that's these two. Um, also paired, you can't see it on this side because of this muscle or these three, but you have one on this side too. Um, so the quadratus lumborum is part of the posterior trunk. It's going to form the posterior wall. Well, I kind of combine those, the posterior wall um, of the abdomen. Okay, so it's the posterior abdominal wall. The origin is the iliac crest. And then the insertion is going to be the transverse process. of some of the lumbar vertebrae. And then this is going to help to flex the spine laterally. And also to extend the spine. And then the last one we're going to go through in this one um, is the deltoid. So the deltoid, right over here, and this is a cut version of the deltoid. Um, so the deltoid is part of the posterior trunk and the shoulder girdle. Okay, um, it's a diamond shape, and it forms the rounded part of shoulder. The origin is going to be the scapula, the spine of the scapula, and then also the clavicle. And then the insertion is the deltoid tuberosity, and it helps to, whoops, abduct the arm. Okay, so that covers um, most of those of the trunk, the trunk muscles.